I'm going to demonstrate how to back up your data and submit it for analysis to generate your estimated breeding values. So you can view our other videos on how to enter your data into Pedigree Master, as well as consult the Pedigree Master manual for more information. So once we've got all of our data uh, inputted into the system, we need to submit that for analysis. And the way we're going to do this is by emailing a backup file of your data. So to get this done, we're going to go to the Pedigree Master home screen. And on the right hand side, we're going to click on Summaries, Validations, and Database Backup. So first, we need to validate our data set. So under the middle section here, we're going to validate it. And what that's going to do is it's going to check our database uh, for errors, just to make sure we didn't make any typos. So if we pre previously submitted uh, old data, we can simply validate the current year. But I suggest validating all years each time uh, just to assure a sound data set's being submitted. So to do that, we're just going to leave the check years of zero to the most current year of 2016. And then we simply click on validate to start the process. Now, if there are no errors present, it's going to come back and say that there's nothing to report. But if errors are present, it will generate a report that identifies what the error is and lists the individuals that have the problem. So, for example, if we make a typo uh, in a date for a weaning weight of a lamb, and the system thinks that that weaning weight was submitted beyond the acceptable weaning category, it'll tell us the ID number and that the weaning weight age range was exceeded. So, for example, if it thinks that a uh, if we put in a date wrong and it thinks that a lamb was weaned at uh, 205 days, it's going to report back to us saying we need to fix this before we actually submit it. So we'll go back into our uh, data set, we'll fix the error, and then revalidate until it reports back that there's nothing to report. Okay. So once we've validated and we have no errors, we're ready to submit our data. So to do this, we're going to move over to the right-hand side of the screen under Backups, and we're going to check that the destination for this backup should be saved to this computer. Okay. And if it asks if you want to include EBVs in the backup, we want to leave that box blank. Under very rare circumstances, do we want to include the EBVs in the backup? Okay. Next, we simply click on Create Backup. It's going to ask, have you run your data validation steps? And we'll continue with the backup, and we'll click on Yes. And then we need to choose where we want to save this database backup. So you can choose whatever location you want. Um, a good location to do it is under your sheep genetics file and under pedigree master. And those files would have been created when you downloaded pedigree master. Just make sure that wherever you save it, you can easily find it later on. For this demonstration, I'll save it onto the desktop just so I can easily find it. Okay. So once we click on OK, it will say that the backup file was created. Okay, and we simply click on OK, and it's going to show us the location of that database file. And the file title is going to be the flock ID that we're using. So for this demonstration, we're using a Polypay flock, and it's flock number 117 within Polypays. Okay. Next, we need to email this file to our partners, Sheep Genetics in Australia. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up our email program, and we're going to address this email to database at sheepgenetics.org.au. Okay. So this is going to go to the database manager in Australia. In the subject line of the email, we want to include our flock ID number. So this is the flock ID number that was assigned to you, and it's the same flock ID number that you start off all the animals that were um, produced there on your farm or your ranch. Then in the body of the email, we just need to specify that we're submitting new data and include our flock number again. Okay. And we want to specify that we're submitting new data or if we're just submitting uh, old data and requesting updated breeding values. So you can request updated breeding values even if you're not submitting new data. So for example, if you sell a ram into another flock and they submit data, that's going to impact your estimated breeding values because of the genetic linkages and you can request updated breeding values based on how those offspring performed. So then again, you'll just specify that in the body of the email if you're submitting new data or simply requesting a, a database backup. Okay. We then need to remember to attach the data file that we're sending, uh, the data file that we just created. So we'll click on Attach, and then we'll find that, uh, that data file that we just created. So mine is on the desktop, and it was the flock ID number, and we'll attach that file to our email. 
And once we've got the file attached, we can simply click on send. And then within two to three days, you'll receive a confirmation email saying that your data was successfully submitted and entered into the database. After the actual analysis is run, you'll receive an email with a link to download your estimated breeding values. And I'll show that in a separate video, which in this process is also outlined in the Pedigree Master Manual. So data is analyzed twice per month. So the longest you'll have to wait is usually two weeks to receive your estimated breeding values back. Again, if you have any questions on how to accomplish any of this, please consult the Pedigree Master Manual or feel free to email or call us at NSIP at any time and we'd be glad to help you out.